you know, it, it's, it's quite a positive uh, development here. It is, Leo. We've been talking about these F-16s mm. for quite some time, and it's another step on the road. If you remember back in July, in the margins of the NATO conference uh, at Vilnius, there was a lot of discussion about 11 coalition partners looking to how would you take forward the training of these Ukrainian pilots. And the uh, training school in Denmark was uh, is, uh, was identified. They're also going to build one in Romania. That's yet to happen. Uh, Denmark and um, the Netherlands have taken the lead in this because they're both F-16 operating um, platforms, so they know the jet. And it's not just about the pilots, it's about the maintainers, it's about the um, armourers and the engineers and everybody. Now, at that time, there was no commitment to provide aircraft and there was also no commitment from the design authority, America, to actually let these aircraft be sent. Well, the important announcement today is the US have said they are happy for Dutch and Denmark to send uh, these aircraft. Um, the Dutch, by, by, by uh, way of sort of context, have about 24 of these F-16 aircraft uh, um, available. They're going to be um, phased out in the middle of next year because they're bringing the F-35 in. Um, but it's worth pointing out this is not a silver bullet. The F-16 is an amazing platform itself, but that in itself doesn't deliver combat power. It's all about its radar systems, its missile systems, its bomb system, its electronic warfare, its self-defence. All of those things have to be upgraded regularly and this will be a fairly old aeroplane, so it's not entirely clear what capability that will be offered yet, but it's an important next step on ah. the road and it is a clear indication of the long-term commitment of the Allies to Ukraine. OK, so not that silver bullet, but a step in the right direction. Absolutely. OK, so what do we know about this drone um, attack in Russia then? What we know so far is that uh, about four o'clock in the morning, the Russians claim that they shot down a Ukrainian drone. Um, now, we're not quite sure about what's its intended target. It came down in the Expo Centre in the Financial District, but it looks likely it was shot down, but of course, inevitably, the debris and then the thing goes off when it hits the ground, caused quite a lot of damage. Um, the Moscow airport was shut down for a a short time as well, which is quite significant. Now, in terms of the damage on the ground, it's not significant. But if you imagine this central London, you know, the whole of Moscow uh, will have been aware of this strike. If it was central London, we'd be all talking about it. Symbolic. It's, absolutely. And it will create a sense of unease amongst the population and the oligarchs, who are the people who provide President Putin uh, his power base. Um, Putin will undoubtedly be angry that this is still getting through. But it's not just in Moscow. Overnight, there was also another attack on the Black Sea fleet. Now, we haven't had any response by the Ukrainian. We do have um, the Russians say they blew it out of the water. The trouble is, it's at sea. There's no footage. We don't actually know what happened. The key is that Russians always claim there's no damage done. But you remember, it's only a few weeks back that two Russian ships were seen being towed back into port, looking very sorry for themselves uh, after they claimed that there was an attack. So we don't know what's happened there yet. OK, while you're here, Sean, um, another line to clear up. So the British Defence Ministry, they've signed new contracts, haven't they? And this is all to provide Ukraine with more air defence defence equipment. What do you know about that? What's particularly fascinating about this story is it's not just old school 20th century, it's yes. brand state of the art stuff. This has been a drone war, not only the long range drones that attack in Moscow, it's also the short range, which is by, by far the, the lion's share of the eyes and the ears over the battlefield. They're small, they're cheap, they're, they're agile, and they're really difficult to shoot down. But this is an area where the UK invests a lot of money, largely because it's critical national infrastructure at home and also stopping the prisoners using these drones to get in. As a result, the MOD has announced three contracts, 90 million, the biggest of which was for 56 million for a vehicle mounted anti-drone capability. This one's called the Cortex Typhon. Uh, it's de designed to detect, track and destroy enemy drones. Uh, this will undoubtedly make a big impact on the battlefield. And for me, it's really important because it's not just about providing lots of ammunition and, and old missile systems. This is state of the art going out and it could make a material difference to the battlefield in Ukraine. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.